PCBWay, and they offer a variety of services like PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, Flex Rigid Flex PCB, CNC machining, 3D printing, offering you the best value, fast turnaround, one-on-one -on -one assistance, truly a one-stop solution for PCB and assembly. So go to PCBWay.com and see what they can do for you. This is the story of my Macintosh SE30. Back in 1989, when I purchased my brand new Macintosh SE30, at the time of its release, it was cutting edge technology. And then having after it several years, I replaced it with an Apple iMac G3. I really liked Apple G3 because it was a fantastic, it was internet friendly, and it had a bigger screen and the main thing is it was color and so uh, my SC30 was basically retired and I stored it away. Later I did give the SC30 to my two boys at the time so they could uh, play with it and learn about vintage computers. Many years passed and upgrading to other Apple iMac computers. I wish I still had my Apple Macintosh SC30 computer. Many years later I was doing some painting for my sister-in-law at her house and also cleaned out the garage for her. She had a lot of storage tubs full of all kinds of old computer stuff and appliances. So I did open one of them up and wow, to my big surprise, there was a Macintosh SE30 computer in there. Uh, it had an extended keyboard, mouse, various software, and the case actually looked brand new. I'd ask her if I could have it since she you know, was basically a PC user, and she said uh, I had no use for it, so yeah, you can, you can have it. So I took it home. I did power it up, and uh, the one thing that I did notice is the thing had hardly any sound to it. So I searched on the internet and realized that it had to be recapped. So when I recapped it, I used basically PC-style tantalum uh, through-hole capacitors to, to do it. Uh, I didn't use a surface mount at the time. So I powered it up and the sound was fantastic. It fixed a problem. I maxed out the memory to 128 megabyte uh, using a, also a, uh, a ROM out of a different machine uh, to do it. Because on those machines, you have to have clean ROM. The natural ROM in that machine is what we refer to as dirty ROM. So I did that. So a lot of time passed. And I thought to myself, you know, it would be really neat to make this machine look kind of like factory with a 10 inch LCD screen in it. So that's what I did. So I undertook this and it was a very challenging project. But when I got it all done, I still had this logic board. So this is going to be my history of this logic board, all of the transformations it went through into where it is currently at now. I hope you liked the video. It took me a while to do this, but I wanted to share this with everybody because I really love the Macintosh SC30. Always have, and hopefully one of these days, I'll find my very, very original one that I give to my boys. They said they've seen it somewhere in their grandfather's garage, so we'll pursue that another time. So enjoy the video. Thank you very much.
this, a lot of people will call this the Sarazi Mac. Or, this is just the video circuit. If you, uh, so these chips here, your video RAM, mm -hmm. this pattern is just its initial state when it gets power. So that's why you'll notice sometimes if you turn off the Mac and turn it back on, the old pattern is still there if you do it quick enough. It's because it's got a little bit of charge. It's got a little bit of charge still left in it. So, now watch this. But, yes, you remember it off. Okay. That's just holding the wrong side. That was crazy. Wow. It's probably. Oh yeah, it's corroded probably. There's probably a few pins, yeah, right down here that you can see like the discoloration. Yeah. So we're gonna just gonna remove it, pop on the new one, and just